guys, it's M, aka Next Colors, and this is part one of two for my Shiro cosplay tutorial. In the first video, I cover how I made the sword and how I styled my wig, and in the second video, I cover how I made the whole outfit. This project actually started back in 2020 before the pandemic hit, so because it took so long, I've lost a lot of the video footage, unfortunately, but I've tried to bring it together as much as I can to make a tutorial for you. So I hope you all enjoy, and let's get on to the video. Starting off with the materials, I knew that I wanted to make this sword see-through with Perspex, so I had to think a lot about how to support it and how the electronics would work around that. I'll go into it in more detail later in the video, but these are all the things I used and the exact spray paints I used. Next came the actual process of cutting the Perspex. Since I didn't have the tools at home, I got help from my granddad to cut the Perspex since he had the tools for it. So we used a bandsaw and table saw to cut it to size. Big granddad shout out, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. If you are doing this entirely at home, I would recommend getting a thinner sheet of perspex and sizing down the sword pattern to one, make it easier to cut, and two, make it lighter, because I found that the sword ended up being pretty heavy, and although it's not too bad, it's not the most comfortable thing to carry around. After cutting it, we sanded and polished the edge of the sword so that it would be slightly beveled, but not so much that it would be sharp, just enough to give it the sword look. Now we get on to adding structure to the sword. Using contact cement and masking tape, I made a somewhat smooth surface for the handle so that it would be easy to cover in layers of 10mm and 5mm EVA foam. The base of 10mm foam was used to make a pouch for the battery pack, as well as being a lower level for the wires to channel through. Next, the top layer of 5mm foam had a small hole cut in it for the wires and all the detail lines were drawn on to indicate where I needed to sand. Using my Dremel, heat gun and a respirator, look after your health, I sanded in the details of the saw to give it a more 3D look. It isn't the cleanest work, but I've never used a Dremel before, so I don't think it's too bad for a first try. To make sure I had space for the switch, I traced around its shape, then dremeled down the Perspex to make a slot for it to sit in. It took a long time and was quite loud since Perspex is a hard plastic, but it worked well. Next came the exciting part, soldering. I'm not that experienced with electronics yet, so I had some help from my stepdad to figure out what parts I needed, but soldering was super easy and fun, so I'm definitely putting more electronics in future projects. When all the electronics were done, I started covering it up with foam. To do this, I cut sections of 1mm EVA foam in long V shapes and wrapped it around the handle. Unfortunately, it only looks correct on one side, but I like the crisscross almost plaited effect it adds. After sealing the edges with polyfiller, I made two glittery gems with UV resin. To diffuse the light from the LEDs, I used some translucent packing foam I had lying around and hot glued a few layers over the LED. I then hot glued the resin gem over that and sealed it with more polyfiller, and then went over that with a ring of foam clay. As a side note, I definitely wish I used foam clay to smooth the edges and add more dimension to the hilt, but that's only something I've realised now. Next comes the part that really brings it together, the painting. Bringing Grandad back in for some more help, we used the spare piece of Perspex to practice how we would paint the blade. By masking down one half of the blade and painting at an angle, I could create a dark to light gradient from the centre point. Removing the masking tape and painting the opposite side, again at an angle, meant that an optical illusion of a central bevel was created. To finish it off, I sprayed light layers of glitter over the sword, trying to make it more glittery towards the hilt. To prepare the hilt for painting, I first covered the blade in cling film and then sprayed the hilt with a black primer. Unfortunately, using cling film didn't work out well, but you'll see why in a minute. After this, I painted the hilt with a few layers of paint, starting with gold, yellow, then a final layer of gold to finish it off. This left me with a smooth, shiny finish. This point was where my good luck for this project ran out. The cling film stuck to the paint and it was impossible to remove. We ended up using cellulose thinners to clean off the paint completely and although this was super upsetting, I think the blade turned out even better the second time. 
Using cling film on painted objects is something that I, and now you, know to avoid doing in the future. On to the final part, the wig. I've already made a short form tutorial which pretty much covers everything, but I crimped the whole wig, cut and styled it with hairspray and a hairdryer, then took it outside to spray it with lots of glitter. This made it very shiny and magical, perfect to go with the rest of the cosplay. That was my Shira cosplay tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope that you got all the information that you might need. But if there's any extra questions that you have, please feel free to write them down in the comments and I will answer them as quickly as I can. If you'd like to see part two of this series, which covers the outfit, the video should be coming out in about two weeks. So make sure you subscribe and turn the bell on so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.